he would have informed us. In our view, the action was patently illegal and unconstitutional and a clear abuse of power. Be that as it may, the decision to challenge the removal is solely that of the Emir, Mohammed Senussi II. At this moment, no such instruction has been given to us. Since the deposition of the Emir, I was at the palace yesterday afternoon in the company of uh, one of my uh, senior colleagues to consult with the Emir. We met him in good spirit and in company of his family to consult with the Emir. We met him in good spirit and in company of his family and a few associates. He said to us that he was waiting for the deposition letter from the government house and was informed that the commissioner of police was on his way along with certain government officials. While waiting there, there was a commotion in the private wing of the palace as some, uh, some unauthorized person tried to gain entry into the family section. This led to some scuffle and taggers were fired by the security operatives. Normalcy was restored after the unauthorized persons along with armed security operatives retreated from the inner part of the palace. I subsequently, along with my colleagues, was able to meet with the Commissioner of Police, that is the Colonel State Commissioner of Police, and other security operatives, with, and with the permission of the Emir, they were led to one of his city rooms where the deposition letter was served by an agent of the state government on him. The Emir accepted the letter and decided to acknowledge it personally. After writing some Quranic verses on the acknowledgement uh, copy, uh, in the Arabic script, of course, along with his signature. This was handed over to the government official. In the letter of deposition, it was stated that the Emir was to be removed to Nasara State. We requested to know if the Emir was under arrest, and if so, we wanted to see the arrest warrant. The Commissioner of Police informed us that the Emir was not under arrest. We informed the Commissioner of Police that it was illegal and a violation of his constitutional rights, that is the rights of the Emir, to remove him to Nasara State against his wish. The Emir informed the Commissioner of Police that his friends had sent an aircraft to fly him with it, along with his family to Lagos and requested that they should be provided with necessary security cover to the airport so that they could leave. The Commissioner of Police refused, saying that that was not their instructions. They were willing to allow the family to leave for Lagos, but the Emir was to be flown to Abuja, then on was taken to Nasara State. It was clear to us that both the Emir and ourselves uh, were helpless and the police and other security agents were willing to take any measures, including the use of force, to achieve their objective. In order to not to jeopardize the safety of the Emir or the safety of any member of his family or indeed other persons around, the Emir decided to cooperate and proceed in the vehicles provided by the operatives uh, to the airport. We accompanied him with the Commissioner of Police to the Nigerian Air Force uh, base, military base in Kano where the Emir was put in a private aircraft and departed to Lagos uh, to, and departed at 6.40 p.m. The family subsequently boarded the aircraft arranged by his friends and departed for Lagos at uh, about 15 minutes afterwards. Gentlemen, we have not spoken to the Emir since yesterday, but we understand that uh, they are at their destination somewhere in a remote part of Nasrallah State after driving for nearly seven hours yesterday night and arrived at their destination at 2 a.m. Uh, this morning. We understand the choice of the location to detain His Highness Mohammed II uh, was intended to cause maximum trauma and distress. Uh, this again is illegal and unconstitutional. According to instructions we received from the Emir through his Chief of Staff, we are directed to take legal action to challenge the legality of the Emir's detention and banishment. We have the fine view that this action is illegal and unconstitutional. Section 35 of the Constitution of our country guarantees every citizen the right to personal liberty. The basis of the denial of personal liberty are set out clearly in that section of the Constitution. None applies to the case of the Emir. The archaic practice of banishment of deposed Emirs, a colonial practice, has no basis under Nigerian law or the Constitution. We are totally perplexed 
and the resort to this practice in present-day Nigeria by its political leaders. The illegality of this practice was pronounced by the Nigerian Court of Appeal in the, attorney, in the case of Attorney General of Kebi State against His Royal Highness Al Taji Al Mustafa Jokolo and others, which is reported in the law report, uh, citation given here, 2013, uh, Law Pavilion Electronic Law Reports 22349 slash Court of Appeal, where the court pronounced it as illegal and unconstitutional and a gross violation of the rights of the Emir. This is what the Court of Appeal said in that case. The banishment and deportation from Kebbi State by the governor of Kebbi State, of, uh, of the first respondent, that is the then Emir of, uh, of Gwandu, Sarkin Gwandu, to Lafia in Nasrallah State, and later on to Obi, also in Nasrallah State, is most unconstitutional and illegal." Unquote. We call on the authorities, in particular the Inspector General of Police, <coughs> the Director General of Department of State Services, and the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, to ensure the immediate release of His Highness Muhammad II so that he can be reunited with his family. We are concerned about the personal safety and security of His Highness at the remote location where he has been held, and wish to call on all well-meaning Nigerians and the international community to bring their influence to bear to ensure that His Highness Muhammad Sanusi II regains his liberty immediately and to guarantee his safety and security. The legal, uh, the legal, team, the legal team of His Highness are working both in Kano and Abuja, and unless he is released immediately, will be taking appropriate legal action. Thank you, gentlemen of the press. Uh, this is the statement we're issuing on behalf of His Highness.